Funk Flex, you know, we, uh, we've started an interesting series here, which we are continuing with. I have George Silva here. You know, I know him as Guito. I know him from the Northeast Bronx. I know him from... Well, let me, let me be specific. I know of you... Because when I was young, and we're even we're about the same age, you know. But um, I lived on Darima Avenue on the forty one hundred block, so I might be four blocks from you, maybe five. And uh, Guito, which is the name that I knew, was um, Eden Ward uh, forty one crew. Correct. This is the corner of two twenty ninth and Laconia, two twenty ninth and. Am I saying that? In the middle. In the middle. You know, 229th is the, is the center of the projects. Correct. But, um, it was right in the middle. Correct. So, um, you know, like I told you, I knew of him and, and, got, and met him uh, later uh, when we were Jim Jones, I think, and he came to the car show. And, you know, I, I always, I have mentioned him before, before I met him and before I knew him because... In the Bronx, you know, his area where he lives from used to be a line of cars, always. But it's this isn't ordinary cars, and this isn't like Cadillacs or or Lincolns. This was like Maximas and BMWs, and I'm a, he had a your team. The legendary car from that hood, bro, <laughs> was a yellow Maxima with a black rag. I, that's the first time I've ever seen a rag top. I, I was the first one to put a rag top on a Maxima. I never saw a rag top on a car until I seen probably one other person back then that put a rag top on the Maxima. Mm -hmm. And I was that was probably I was in Harlem. Who mm -hmm. had a red Maxima with a black top? So you knew you what you had to do. Was this before you or after? Um, same time, same time. Um, but then I, you know, my Maxima was black at first, black on black. Then I sw I changed it all around. That yellow, bro. Canary yellow. <laughs> Such a statement. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's when that's what they were doing. Those wild colors at the time. Remember? Yeah, correct. Those were doing like fluorescent. Well, well everybody didn't have it like that to get it done. But you know, but whoever you, had it. The, yeah, the, you, those the, were the colors. Your car creativity, my brother, was oh, nah, was I, on I, level I, ten. You was you was on level ten. So I want to go to the very beginning because. I know you've done. Uh, how, you, I know you. You were arrested in eighty eight, eighty nine, eighty nine, and you. How many years the did you do? The beginning of eighty nine. And how many years were you incarcerated? Seventeen. Seventeen years. But I want to go back before that. Now, you're young. You did you? What part? Where were you born? In the, you're born and raised in the Bronx. Yep. Jacoby Hospital. Jacoby Hospital. I don't even think that's... Is that there anymore? Yeah, it's there, is it still there? I don't know if it's still called Jacoby. I think it's called I Jacoby think, or Mont Montefiore took it over. I don't know, but... Montefiore yeah. took over a lot of hospitals. Yeah, they got the um, smash. I think I was born in Albert Einstein. I don't know why. And I don't think that's there Yeah, anymore. my son was born there. But it's not there. That's not there anymore, is that's it? That's still there, it too. Is? Yeah. Get out of here. That's a college. Um, A lot of college uh, students okay. study there. And they get the degree and they get on hands on, you know. They do a lot of um, definitely prenatal. I mean, you know, a lot of prenatal stuff. Do you remember Fordham Hospital? My mother used to work there. That was Fordham Hospital. Fordham, Fordham Hospital. I've was, heard of it, but where was it? Though? Uh, it was, was it, like uh, I feel like I think I felt like it was somewhere in the concourse area. If anybody Fordham wants to go Hospital. into Utah, Fordham, Fordham Hospital. If anybody remembers that, hit up the comments. This is like late seventies, early eighties, if I remember correctly. Misericordia. Misericordia. You remember? That's remember that was someplace you didn't want to go? Oh, I didn't until, like no hospital. I still don't like hospitals. Until though. they took over. Someone else <laughs> took over. That was hot. That was Bronx Hospital talk. So, you, you, you are. What what school? What what school did you go to? When what high school Beginning, you went to? Oh, high school. Ev. You went. Van, so you went to Vander Child. Vander Child. Yeah. Did you graduate from there? No, I dropped out. I dropped out. I was running around. What, what grade? What? Ninth grade. Like ninth right grade. Away. So you the went first, for one year. The first year. Yeah, I was. Then I. You like this isn't for you. I realized that that school at the time. No disrespect to you know everybody that go to that school, but at the time, that school wasn't really, if you wanted to learn, 
you have to have that drive to learn, but you can easily get distracted because there was so much going on and so many people not going there to learn that it was just, you know, it was too much. I, I didn't feel like I was getting anything out of it. Plus, I was so focused on the street at the time that it was just, you could just call that denial. Like, oh, I'm not learning nothing here. Nah, because you don't really want to learn nothing there. You know what I'm saying? It's I like, got you. That's how we, you know, we, we grow up trying to think that a negative thing is coming from something else and we, we just blame other things for our mishaps, you know? What year was this ninth grade for you? This is... Like 83, 83. 83. It was, yeah, early, early 80s. So, early when, 80s. when would you say is your, or what was your first hustle? Like, what were you... First hustle? Where, what were you, what were you, like, uh, what were you hustling? Like, you know, because you're yeah. saying, you said the in ninth grade time. you were already, you were already had a little street life in you and what you yeah. wanted to do. So, what were you doing prior to that? So then, that means... Seventh grade or eighth grade, like where is it? Where is yeah, it? Right around there, you know. Like I was like twelve, thirteen years old, and you know, started getting familiar with the street, going outside, coming upstairs late. You know, my mom mm. didn't really stress my time in and out because I was, you know, starting to show signs of manhood, whatever. And um, I started hustling. Like I would wait till like the fireworks season. Okay. Started, that's how I got into like just knowing how to flip a pack. I started buying like little fireworks, like bricks of firecrackers, and I was selling them. I was young. I was selling during, you know. This is seventh grade? grade? Yeah, I was young. Yeah, I was young. I was like 13. Mm -hmm. So right around there, I was like hustling like fireworks during the, you know, fireworks season. And that would be my little hustle. And I couldn't wait to that time of the year came around so I could do it again, <laughs> you know. But then by, you know. Time I hit fifteen. I mean fireworks. Like, ah, I mean, tell me, like, I was so already smoking, bud. When I was like uh -huh. 11, 10, 11 years old, I already smoked, but I didn't hustle no bud until I learned how to hustle. Now with the fireworks, what would you buy it for? What would you sell it for? Like, what, what was? I, oh, I yeah. just want to know your profit. No, the brick, the brick. The so the profit, brick would cost you. Not, would, you know, the, any you, game you you want to hustle and you want to double the money, <laughs> so. Whatever it costs, like let's say. So you had a brick, different look on his face when he said double the money? You want to double that money. Listen, you know, it might have cost $8 a brick back then or $7 a brick. Uh huh. And you, you wanted, I think, something like 80 packs in a brick at the time and you just had to do the math. Wow, like 35 I cents that. a pack. That used to be yeah, thunder bombs. You know what I'm saying? Woo! For some reason, the, the Bronx bomb. was very. Shout to all the Italians yeah. from our part of town. You know? They were so uh, with the fireworks, man. They used to I do it big. Yeah, yeah, we didn't have to buy anything during Fourth of July if you lived near a town. Where, where would you go to get? I'm just curious. Like you, you'd buy where it would from. You buy it from the Italians and then flip it. Like where were you buying? Back in the hood, you know. I used to go by 87 Park. 87, you know. Remember 87. PS87. PS87, absolutely. That's a, don't go over there if you're not from over there. Oh, absolutely. Or if you know, oh, if you know somebody. <laughs> Back in them days. Yeah, 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 yeah. Know somebody. It was crazy. Or get to know somebody. Um, okay, so now, what is your... So this is what? This is this is 80? 80, 80, 80, 80, 80 something. 80, 80, 80, 81? Are we talking about, you know... 7th grade. 82, 83. So... You remember them MB5s? Absolutely. Okay, so those came out in 82. Let's break, let's break this down. Those came out in 82. Hold on. The, oh, MB, the MB5, MB who made it? Was it Honda? <laughs> Honda MB5. Listen, <laughs> it was it was a moped. That wasn't a moped. It had moped wheels, but it, but it worked like a, it had gears. It yes. It had gears. And the it was like, M yo, training. MB5. Anybody I can't believe you how? said that. <laughs> Yeah. Was and so R, fly. Yeah, and the AR and the R eighty, what was it R, called? Uh, R80. That was a small one but with the bigger nah, wheels. The Kawasaki one they made. They Kawasaki made a bike to you know. Oh they did that magic. I thought it was one with it the bigger red. wheels. Now, uh, this was a bike that you wore with the helmet. You always had it. Oh, so you want everybody to see your face? Oh, I remember this bike. <laughs> oh my god, the M V five. Okay, yeah. so then so this is what, eighty two? Yeah. So now eighty two's here. Are you, are you, uh, what's your next hustle? Because now you're away from fireworks, right? The fireworks is only happening once a year. What's your next I mean, thing now? Obviously, like, So you're selling I weed. A, you know, I used to go to the plaza. They didn't call it weed then. What they, it was. Lamb's bread, all those yeah, things. Yeah, uh, you know, okay, okay. Skunk. 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 Uh, skunk. Absolutely. You know, they had all those names, but. Some back old then. school terms. Okay. Yeah. So and now. You know, tie stick in them days, you know? Correct. But, you know. 
So now, look at the it, names now. It, 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 it's progressed. Crazy. So now, does this become something you're doing every day, or uh, you're yeah, you celebrate every day? This is no school. You're still in school though. Are you still in school? When this is happening, or this is after you decide not to no, go on the night? I was still in school. I was already hustling before I left school. Okay. But not for, I didn't hustle for the game. I hustled for the survival, like, far as, like, just to keep money in my pocket each day, you know, to smoke. So this is smoke, this is boys. lavish living. This is, this is in equivalent to a job for you and I have money in my pocket yeah, and I'm able to do it at my own leisure and ask my parent for any money none, you know to try to survive on your own without going to other and people. you're in more projects at the time definitely okay so now you're selling weed this is even more when I was four you moved to even when you were four where, 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 where were you Born, what, like, what part of the Bronx? Oh, I'm, I'm from the Tremont area, Daly okay. Ave. But wow. I moved there. I moved out of there when I was four. Okay, and, and that was ha it was hectic over there, bro. Oh yeah, no doubt. But yeah. a little less hectic in Edenwald, I feel like that was definitely a a move yeah. or being a little less hectic yeah, from Tremont yeah. uptown, to Edenwald. Uptown was a little northeast, light, light, light when it comes to the drama and all that, and it was less. It wasn't as busy. Correct. Like you know them busy areas and uptown is kind of could be a, do a ghost count a ghost town sometimes you know so so you you move there you, okay you're there you're in Edenwald you're getting ready to drop out of school you're selling weed this we're now we're at like eighty three so what happens <coughs> to you next like so you're selling weed how how does that go for you like you said in the plaza so the plaza. I felt was definitely that was a lot of Jamaicans that were in that area. Correct? How did that even work for you? It didn't work for me. Like <laughs> it didn't work. But um, yeah, like I was down there, and the dudes, you know, they got familiar with me being around there. But um, yeah, I was. Try, they tried to run me out of that block. I got I got stabbed in my neck down there on that plaza. Get out of it. This is yeah. when you. So when you first. Yeah. This happened when I was fifteen. So okay. you're talking about fifteen years old. That's from this is ninth, tenth time. grade. This is yeah, this I was out. Of, I already dropped out. When you're doing I this, dropped out. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't stay in EV for more than six months of the first year I went there. Ninth okay, grade. and that's it. I dropped out of school and started running around. But yeah, hustling on the plaza. You know, got into a little misunderstanding with some individuals there. They tried to tell me I couldn't be out there, and I was like, "Yo, where are you from? Like, I live right there." Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. I wasn't trying to hear that, and next you know, it was, you know, we got into a little beef or whatever. Like I embarrassed, you know, an individual in front of all his friends because he was like 27 years old and I'm 15, and he's trying to push me around, and like I put the beats on him, and then after that, yeah, I put the beats <laughs> so on him. Old school, so old school. That's still now. So I put the beats, and then um, somebody handed him a knife. And he tried to like intimidate me, and then I didn't. I didn't run. I just kept fighting him, not realizing that he he was cutting me. Mm -hmm. I really didn't feel it throughout, you know, through the adrenaline of the fight and all that. I didn't really feel it. But my man, um, one of my boys I was with, Frank Du, um, he was like, "Yo, come on!" He just snatched me and told me, "Look, we gotta run. Take me back to the crib." Then I went into the, you know, my mom's house. I looked in the mirror. I had like. Bleeding, I was bleeding out of my forehead, mm -hmm. and uh, then I realized, oh, I seen this wide open. Mm -hmm. you know? And then I went to the hospital, you know. And then, uh, like a lot of the OGs from Did you go back to that block? They went. The OGs from the hood went back down there, and that's when they they kind of shut them down. They couldn't hustle out there no more after that, cause they was like, yo, what y'all, you know, look at it now, like a twenty-seven year old would stab a 15 year old kid that everybody knows and like I had a reputation as being one of the young kids on the block and they did that to me like they didn't like that they took it personal Got you. you know so and any anytime you know when it comes to my hood you know Eden Wall like we rep and if there's any violations we would go we would do what oh, we would do but only if to protect our own interests, you know that's just how we used to be. So you're selling weed down there, right? Now this is Adrian. So now you're selling weed. You're in the plaza, which uh, uh, I know exactly where you're at, because I'm envisioning in my mind. 
across the, correct me if I'm wrong, like across the street from the precinct. Right? Like the precinct oh. is down the street. Yeah. Four down seven. The block. Yeah. Well, you can see them literally coming down the street. Though. So four seven precinct, this is going on. Are the cops even like coming down here, seeing what's up, saying anything, anything, nothing? On the plaza. Yeah, they coming yeah. in there, riding through there, they trying to, to jump. They used to jump out and dudes used to run every direction, dip in the stores. You know how it is. Dip in the store, make believe you're playing a video game. That's when they had the video games. So dudes used to Asteroids, jump on Space the, Invaders. You know, um, that's Millipede. Pop, that millipede, popping. You know, millipede. I played all those games. Trust me, I'm a gamer. You like it? I'm still playing. You, you still know, play? I, yeah, I'm, you know, I keep, I try to keep a young mind, you know, keep my ear to the ground of what's going on, even though, you know, I got, I got the old head mentalities too. But either way. So now you, you, you hear the plaza, you're selling weed. What's the next step for Gito after this? Like, where do you, where do you, where do you move to? Because, you know, I, I saw the paper, you know, when you got arrested. And, you know, the numbers that I saw was like 253,000 cash in the wall, you know, 10, 20,000 a day. You know, mm -hmm. I, take me to how it even gets to that because you're at Weed. It's '83. We're, yeah, nah, we, we're three we, years yeah, before the crack epidemic. Exactly. What are you doing in between, like well, at there? At that and, time, you know, we're talking. What about happens 80, after the weed? Talking about '83, '84. You know, we started getting into the a little bit more serious about mm. hustling and um, getting a little bit of trying, just trying to get paid and really do it for more positive reasons and besides just having money in your pocket. Mm -hmm. like, okay, we're going to try to come up. I want to put some money up, whatever, try to Now, there's no 41 crew yet. No. This is just you. Well, there was always a 41 crew. Okay. They was, not, they was not known for hustling. Okay. They were just known for, like, hanging out. You know, I, you know, 41 was always a popular building. Okay, correct. And there's a few popular buildings around, you know, in Eden Wall, but 41 was just one of them. Okay. And it was, you know, we, we made noise over there, but at the same time, you know, we was humble dudes. We was growing up young, and we learned from other, you know, other individuals that we saw. And that's really the reason why I got into the game, because the only individuals that I saw coming up was dudes that was hustling. Okay. Like, I was never really exposed to... Who'd you see? Like, who, you know, not see, like, per se, but who are the hustlers that you knew of before you got started or during? Like, who, who were some of the OGs at the time? Yeah, you know, like, rest in peace, Eric. You know, like, I'm going to be saying names out of, like, like I said, rest in peace, Eric. He was a twin, and um, he had another brother. I forgot his name, but they were brothers, and they were... I used to see them. They was fly, you know? I used to see a couple cats on the ad, like, you know, I don't really like to say too many names. Okay, okay. I don't get permission to s from that individual Ooh. for me to say their name, so I wouldn't really say their name. But, yeah, there was individuals that I used to watch, and I learned. What are individuals moves, you that know? you watch from afar that, that, you know, because at this time, correct me if I'm wrong, Fat Cat does exist, right? In this time, this is. Uh, I never heard of him until, like, Later on, when things got a little bit like in the eight, late, you know, eighty eight era, eighty seven. I think they already had came in somewhere around eighty six, eighty seven. Okay. I'm not even sure what year they got knocked, but that that case was somewhere around eighty eight, eighty nine. Okay. I was at eighty nine. But um, yeah, no, I used to see one time I was, you know, I went downtown, <clears throat> and I started trying to, you know, look for a connect whatever, cause I. At that time, I didn't know too many people. I was just trying to get money. So you didn't. So so this weed. So to the weed, you're graduating now. You're trying. You're graduating to an, another level. So you don't have a connect. You're looking for a connect. Yeah. No. I, well, this was before, like, right around before the crack ever came out. Mm -hmm. You know, I got introduced. You know, to w the rock. You know, the rock form of crack, and I was like, wow, and it didn't know what it can do. Were you selling cocaine before this? Were you were you into the cocaine nah. game? You so you went from weed to crack. Nah. You you never did the cocaine game. You never sold that. Nah, I did, I, I did, but during the crack era. But nah, I used to be into that leaky leak. Okay. I don't know if anybody know what that is? But yeah, well, I have know, an idea. I was into that, but like I said, not for not for a big gain, just for like survival, and cause like I was the only one around. And, the we're, hood. and we're not pushing this on people. 
um, or glorifying it, we are just sharing a moment in time and what New York City looked like in these years. Okay. I definitely want to express that. Like, I mean, I chose to, you know, to do, to speak to you and all that, but definitely my message is not to try to show people that what I did, to try to follow my path as far as getting in the hustle game. Like, you know, there was, there was individuals that got in the game, got out, and they, you know, they're, su they're considered successful. And that, that percentage is very low, mm -hmm. you know? And um, I'm definitely not trying to get a young brother to listen to this and be like, oh, I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a start up, I'm gonna I'm a blow up like him. Cause really that, I've been through a lot after that, you know? And I did all those years in prison and nothing in this world, nothing that I ever had could, could replace the 17 years that I did. Mm -hmm. Cause that was a very, you know, just missing my family and not getting to do things took away my 20s and my 30s, you know? And you know, I know I didn't know you at the time, you know, nobody thought you was ever coming home, bro. I'll keep it a buck. With yeah, you. Like, nah. you know, it was course, the way man. that read in the paper, I was like, wow, this is... Nah, the first time I saw my lawyer, within the first two weeks of me being um, arrested, um, he was like, yo, you're facing 20 years. Then he came back the next week. He was like, you're facing 40 years. And then he came again. He was like, you're facing life. And I'm like, what's going on? And he, I was like, these numbers keep increasing every time. He said, because they, they're finding out this. They're saying this. They're saying that. We don't know what's true, what's not true. But they're trying to put all these years on you. you know. But then they had the, the kingpin law, which is you know 848, Cracking. on okay. the lowest level. Like, I'm no top level 84. I don't con never consider myself what people consider me you know mm -hmm. far as the name and all that some people have stories some of them are true some of them are exaggerated some of them are watered down it don't I mean that, that that <coughs> either one yeah. project bro was lit yeah no we you we know had, it was it was lit in a way and it every see, day was a every day was a story like. and here i'll tell you why it, it looked magnificently lit because it's not you know harlem you had area you had like five six areas of things going on lit. <laughs> You know, in the Northeast, like that one area looking like I, that stood out so much. Them. That's the reason why a lot of times when, when I was getting money and I had time to relax, go chill, I would go to where I could blend in that. Mm -hmm. And I would go to Harlem, I would go to places like the rink or the rooftop, I was all over me. Anybody that's from out there and they know me, they saw me, they, I used to be running all up and down there. I, went, I did the S and S thing. S and S Club, yeah, late you know, night. I did. Amazing. I did all that Willie Burger. I did all those. Willie Burger, the best burger in America. Right. Raw onions, ketchup, mayo, <laughs> on that bread in the tin foil. Tanya was cracking. That is our uh, Willie's daughter. Yeah. Uh, amazing moment. So I, I'm surprised. So you, so you, you went from the weed to the crack. Like, like it, nah, oh, I'm sorry, that was a stop. A little bit, a little, a little leaky pause, leak. Mess around with that. With okay, that, with that leak. Okay, and then, so then now you go from there. So now we're where are we? Eighty five. Yeah. Eighty yeah, forty five. Yeah. yeah. So, At the end of eighty five, right around the end of eighty five, is when you know an individual told me, look, check these, check out these bottles right here. Who? So, uh, well, yeah. I'm sorry, sorry. Rest in peace. You know what I'm saying? He, mm -hmm. he not, he not here with us right now. Where he was here. that? Is this in, Bronx? In, in my hood. In he's from Wall? my hood, but he was hustling somewhere else where they had crack, and he in another part of the Bronx. Yeah, in the BX. And then he came to me and he was like, check these, take these bottles, hold them. Some because a couple of people will come might look for it at and they've asked for it. This is what they're asking for, mm -hmm. you know. And then I you and know, he's just doing that on the love, just because he knows yeah, you. Yeah, nah. He was trying to you know put me on or whatever, and I was trying to get money. He knew I had the energy to do that. Mm -hmm. He saw potential in me, and he and he just started blessing me, you know. And he looked out, but I obviously messed up. I started messing with that shit for a little while. When so a when, little when, mission. when you say mess up. You, you, you start to use it. Yeah, I used it. I started thump putting it in blunts, and then you get addicted from it, from doing that, too. So this is like early 86, because the craze yeah, doesn't come till summer, yeah, right? Yeah, early 86. Yeah. Early 86. So, so early 86. Summer of 86. The summer of 86 is when I fucked up. I was doing, like, 
like I just that whole summer. Okay. And then right around New Year's. So what do you so so what are you doing here? You're 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 um you're selling, but you're getting enough that you make your money and you're using at the time. Well, I started selling, but once you started using it, who you didn't want to sell it no more. You end up using it, and I messed. I fucked up the now, package. Now when I fucked up some money, and my man that put me on, he was like, "Yo, I can't fuck with you no more," and he just just put me. So you when know, you, I, I was just like stressed out for for a minute. But when you first got it, people were still looking for me well, for it, and I'm over here, don't even have it because I I jacked off my package. I'm keeping real. I jacked off the package. And then, like, dudes were looking for me still, and I was saying to myself, damn, I still got the clientele for this. Mm -hmm. Like, if I was to just, like, leave it alone, I could get money. Mm -hmm. And then that's when exactly what When you first started, before you started using, were you, were you seeing the difference in the game? Like, was the money coming? It wasn't. It wasn't hot yet. It wasn't nothing yet. We're talking about the $20 bottles at that time. That's how it is. So this is, this got to be a little tail end of 85. 85. Tail end of 85. Okay, was, okay. You know, and then um, I started going downtown, like, you know, we're talking about New Year's of, 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 of no, we're not, eight, I'm talking about tail end of 86. Tail end of 86. Tail end of 86, because 87 is, you know, is when I really was like, yo, I'm going to go. You know, I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm gonna get off them and start getting on my feet. Did again. you do it on your own? No help to get off the drug? Like, uh, I never took, I never went into any program or nothing like that. How did? What was you? What was you? You just said I'm just gonna stop. Yeah, my my baby. No withdrawal. No baby mom at the time before we had a kid, but right around that time she was like, "Listen, man, you know, um, I can't be with you." You're gonna be doing that, like everybody talking about you, this and that, and that. And I said, I'm gonna get on, I'm gonna get on my feet. And then one day, I just was like, that's it. And this is what age you're young too. This yeah, is. Yeah, I, I was like 17. Let me see, 87. I was um, I'm talking about 80s, 86. Yeah, I was, I was just turned 19. I so was 19. You could have easily went off the deep end with yeah, it. Yeah, I, I almost did. Like you know, I, I don't want to put out too much of my story because I plan on working on a project that's very interesting and I don't want to pinpoint like some of the details of what made me make the changes because some of those things are very um could be inspiring to others or could be sad to others but it's part of a a good story mm -hmm. and I, I want to reserve some of that because I want to set the time out to put out something because I'm working on a book okay and I'm definitely trying to um work on something f for the viewers you know so so new year's you know, eve about that whole detail but yeah we're talking new about year's eve 86 80 going into 87 you you you, you come clear i have 50 dollars i started with 50 dollars and wait. i never looked back wait $50. how'd you get the 50 dollars? where'd you get the 50 i sold the radio my girl's radio wait a minute i sold it and they thought i was going to smoke that 50 and I took that 50, I hopped on the train, I didn't pay, cause back then you could hop on the train. No camera. Easy. Yeah, no problem. Cop yeah. might chase I hopped you. hopped on the train, went all the way downtown, caught me five bottles, came uptown, sold them for 20, went next day, bought 10, Wait, 12, so that means, that means, that means going. the radio, you got 50, you sold those got bottles. and radio back too, after, a, couple, a month later. You bought it back. For double the price, here you go, let me get that. I had, oh, I had uh, my money was up in a month. A month. I was pushing that maximum by by March. You lying? That's wait. So you, you and we're not condoning this because listen, we know what drugs does to the community and to the people, and we know what crack did. We are just you know saying what was what's true. What really happened? So fifty dollars turns into what? Like so if you go, but that first run, what did that turn into? How much? Hundred. A hundred dollars. And I got twelve for a hundred. Okay, and then now that now that a hundred turns into one uh one twenty one forty, I just kept doubling up. Every, every, hundred, day, every day. Every day within the next within three days I was like you know, I was already in the thousands. Okay. So then so are you still at this point you're still buying them already bottled up? Yeah. You're still buying them. So this is happening for you. Where do you shift gears? Because at some point, yeah, you have to dude, you know, either was, cook it yourself. I was dealing make with it somebody. God, you know, God bless him. He's retired. He went back to DR. 
you know, he's one of the ones that I say made it. He was in New York. He was in. He, he's yeah, in New York. and it was in the Heights and all that. And um, uh, he kept saying, "Why are you buying so many bottles? I need to see, show you how to cook this." And I was like, "When?" He was like, "Tomorrow." Like you know, and he just showed me. And next thing you know, I knew how to, I knew how to chef it up. Uh huh. He started calling me Chef Boy Al Geek. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to be a little nickname we had in the circle. but um, Is he also, you know, because you didn't say his name, so we're not blowing it up. Was he also giving you the package? So you were getting the, were you getting the package from him and, he, and, and, and then you taking and cook it? Or he just showed you how to cook it. Now you got to figure out how to connect. One time. He showed me one time. He but he's me. not your connect at the time. He was my connect. He's like your connect. Yeah, he was my connect. Okay. Yeah. And um, he said, next time you come, I'm going to let you cook it right there in front of me. And if you're doing it right, I'm gonna let you ride. If not, I'll, sh I'll correct help you. And I did it right the first. That's he the game. This is the game changer. For yeah, you. this is the. This Big is time. the. Yeah, because I came once from from that point. Instead of buying bottles, I was getting it at weight, mm -hmm. and I was able to drop my price. Uh, you know, because they were 20, you, you know, up in the hood, it was like twenty dollars a bottle back then. Mm -hmm. But overnight, as soon as I learned how to cook, it, I dropped my price to ten. When dudes in the hood was just getting on 20. And when, when they got to 10, I dropped to 5. So I stood a, a little bit ahead of everybody. That's all it really was. It stood a little bit ahead of, that's why they call it hustle. You got to out-hustle the next man. Not in a way where you want to hurt that person, but you just want to you wanna get your grind on. You want to do it as quick as possible. And you want to get paid. Like, And even though if it's individuals around you that are trying to get money too, like, I have no problem helping dudes get money because that's what type of individual I am. Like, I wasn't that selfish cat. Mm -hmm. you, know, you could walk, you know, through my hood anytime and anybody, most likely a high percentage of people will always say, yo, he was a good dude. He wasn't no, mm -hmm. I wasn't no grimy dude. You know, like, wasn't no killer. It was all pure hustle. Like, when you hear Gito, don't think that, like dudes told that story that guy you know i met that guy oh today, and he told Dan, me this story Dan about Smalls. jumping out of a car doing and i was like whoa because i don't want people to really remember me for that part uh, well, it was just pure grind like but that I was, was but but I, but that story which he told of you getting into an altercation and putting the beats on someone this was a this was a different beats not the yeah, beats another beat. <laughs> <laughs> not the original beats but but see Rest in peace to Wolf. Yeah. Definitely. You know, but and Shout out to the valley. I never the Valley Mob, you know, uh Phil, everybody from the Valley, but you know, because I, you know, being nice with your hands, you know, was a little bit of a rarity for uh someone, you know, in the street doing that. And, you know, I, I don't know anything about I don't really consider myself being a person that was Crazy nice with my hands, but but was that like, was your. But I feel like that was your first choice. Like yeah. it, it was the hands. Of course, of and, course. and and always has to be. And, Even to today, it has to be like nobody's and, trying to. And and and, and, and 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 Wolf was that type of character because before Wolf and rest in peace to Wolf, of course, you know before uh, he was with Diddy, or um, around him, I used to c get my hair cut on Boston Road. So you know Boston Road Valley always fighting, mm -hmm. and you know. Wolf would always want to knuckle up with somebody like he ain't care double yellow line or whatever that happened but you know this is reminding me of you know the Bronx in 86 if you really think about it that pistol or knife wasn't first option it was like we're gonna fight yeah now nah, well well we come from the same era where most people were transitioning from fighting with their hands to using weapons. Correct. That, that that's that, what I feel yeah. it was. And it was I happening. I kind of blame my era for the getting into that. Mm -hmm. And I wish sometimes that dudes could learn how to put that down and be like, "Yo, the strongest man is the man who know how to fight." Like it used to be, like when we were young. And you know, sometimes you'd have a fight with some person. That person would end up being your friend, like down the line. Yeah. You know, it, the that was actually that's a good technique to to knowing if somebody's real with you. All right, fight them first. Now, now we got that out the way. Now what's up? If I ain't it, scared of you. You ain't scared of me. We both know that. Let's work on whatever we work on. What we doing? Yeah. There's no reason to continue this. Yeah. So you have your connect. Now we're 80, we're end of 86, we're in 87. You have your connect. He's showing you how to cook it. Mm -hmm. 
Does the 41 crew exist yet in the form that it, it we know it as, or does this not come about yet? This is still um, you. It's starting, to, it's, starting to, it's starting to formulate. Like, I started recruiting a couple of individuals from my building, you know. I had one or two people that was just holding me down. Like, I had this on the floor where my moms live. Next door, there was, from my mom's apartment, was like a um, crack house. And one day... I didn't same realize floor. It, same floor, but I was doing my thing already. But I was outside. But these individuals... The building flooded. Yeah, the next door, I started seeing them. a lot of traffic on my floor. And I'm like, hold up. <laughs> so I went and knocked on the door, and I went in there, and I said, oh, this is what's going on in here. And there was somebody in there that was hustling. That was from there? No. That's what took you to a bad place. Yeah. So I went in there, and I said, yo, you can't rock like that. But this is what I would do. We could go half half on this door right here, mm -hmm. and that's how I kind of like started taking a little serious. Mm -hmm. And then he didn't take it that serious. He was like putting his little workers in there and um, working, trying to work twelve hour shifts, whatever. Because you know how it was, twenty four hours. But um, I would take twelve hours. He'll take twelve, and then at the end of my twelve hours, he won't show up for another six hours. Mm -hmm. So then I end up getting out of a day. I was getting like twenty hours, eighteen hours out of the day. Out so whatever, whatever time was your time, whatever time was his time. He had yeah, and and if he if he came late, it was his problem. You held it down till he came. Yeah, and then when he come, switch off. So I, I, I let him rock, but only until his time was up again. We can't. We can't. Like extend if you came, it. yeah, nah, no, no, no extension. Nah, that wasn't part this of this. Is Burger plan. King? We have it all way. Nah, we just. 12 hours, 12 to 12, whatever. You know, and still, even at that point, I wasn't really so serious, but I was getting money. I was already driving. When but you say getting joke. money, I this is 87. Money. They would account 10, ra 20 what? racks or whatever. A like week? I can have a week? I can access. Yeah, nah. My brother. Not yet. My brother. Not that's, yet. A, that's a lot of money in 86. Yeah, but not nah, we wasn't on. There was like there was no rap yeah. money. There's nothing I can't even compare it to what was going on. That that's it. That's I the did. bar. I mean, if I was getting that kind of money, I was spending it just as quick as I was getting it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like sometimes you don't stack money. You getting it's coming quick. You spend it quick. What are you two? You're twenty now. What what age? Are you? Yeah, I was I was I was twenty. I, okay. You know, them people came to get me. I was twenty one, going on twenty two. Wow, you're young. Fast brother. came down. Yeah, I'm the youngest besides George, boy George. Uh, we both the youngest. Did you know years. Boy George? I knew then? of him from the street, and I got to know him inside. Got you. So we we you know he he's actually we turned out to be kind of you know he's a good he's a good dude from what I remember. Like we we was going to court. You Same know, time. At the time, yeah, cause he um yeah they came in two weeks. Yeah, his 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 case is like two weeks after mine. Okay. Cause like they swept the Bronx. Okay. Crack crew, dope crew, like that, you know. So you're you're in '87. You're you're not making twenty grand a week, but almost. You're you're cooking it up now yourself. So now this is still happening out of your out of mom's house in Edenwall Projects. This is still out of mom's house. Now you now you're next, next door. door. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 now, <Nah>, but definitely. <laughs> Not at the mom's crib. Next door, same floor. Yep, next door, next same door, floor. same floor. Then, she know, doesn't have a clue of what's never, happening. Even to the day when they came, my mom's like, I don't, I, I see my son. He's he looks like a million bucks, but I don't know what the hell he's doing. Okay. And you know, they was like, all right, whatever, like, cause they wasn't out to get my mom's like that. Which they, you know, they dirty like that. They'll go after your family. Mm -hmm. They go after you know. And if anybody who knows federal law, you know about conspiracy, so you know about knowing and willingly, and if you knew a person was making money and you was expending that money with them, then you was down with them, you know what I'm saying? So, so, so you're doing these numbers with one house, one apartment, and, and, and being in front. a couple of workers, a couple of workers, yep. In front, so when does, when does the, how does the operation get bigger? started getting bigger when a lot of people was go running into my building and then other guys that lived in the hood would go and start to stand in front of my building and start trying to like cut throat. Like people be like, yo, what's up? Where geek do I am? Some dudes used to be like, I'm right here, that's me. And then they would like front like they were me just to get that sale. And the front of the building got really hot 
mm. because it was in front of the building now. And now people can see that from their windows and the police could drive by and they could see traffic. Transaction. Right mo yeah, in motion right there in front of the buildings. And so we had to, f you know, I was trying to figure out, you know what, I got to get these dudes. Some of them didn't even live in front of my building. And I used to be like, listen, go h hustle in front of your mom's building. Mm -hmm. Really, that's how dudes started respecting the hustle. And at back then, you know, if anybody who knows from back then would, would tell you that it's territorial. Boy, you know, the, the game was very territorial. Like, I'm going to be right here. This is going to be my label. It's going to be my name. This is the color we rocking. You can't violate none of that. Don't come over here. You know, it was spots. That's what they called it back then. You had a spot, a weed spot. I opened up a spot. spot. A spot. Like nobody's, you know, the spot now is where you stand, and that's that's your spot. Wherever you can stand, and oh, move your computer, and yeah. uh, uh, well, they deliver yeah. now. I don't know if you know. All that too they, del me. they 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 yeah. deliver what the pills and the whole like. Yeah, I, I, oh, are they gay? Mm. Like I said, dudes. Not condoning this. We're just being honest about what goes on in America. A little, you know, but um. How did how do you clear this building up when it's crowded like this? One individual at a time. Beats. If necessary. <laughs> and I, I have friends, you know, I have brothers from my building, you know, dudes I grew up with. I used to be like, yo, what's up? You know, let's tell this dude he can't be out here. And if he sues, if he, if he's, if he beefs about it, we're going we're gonna to stomp him out. And it only took like one or two examples. You know, and old, dudes school, started you know old school that phrase is I have heard, a stomp, stomp out. Stomp him out. <laughs> you know, How about this one? That. Universal gods. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, but, yo, um, <laughs> yo, it's about to catch a universal. Now you remember too with a fist fight in the Bronx. I don't know where you else. It was like, don't fall, don't get stomped out. <laughs> like it was all about holding your yeah, feet don't get stomped out. and thin up because you know. And then remember, yo, I'm gonna tell you, oh. slam. What about the body slam? Wait, oh, the body slam was never good because wrestling was all over the TV, so everybody wanted to body slam you. You remember this? You remember a two niggas fighting? He wouldn't stomp you, but stomp the side. Like, act like it and stomp the ground on. I could have stomped you. Like <laughs> niggas, yeah. he used to be like, I could have stomped you, but you all, you also knew that the you know because you know that stomp would could lead someplace else of afterwards. That was you know that was if not going to be pretty. If gets challenged, and you want to take it to the next levels, guys would take it to the next level or don't. Mm -hmm. you know, take it to the Stop next or start. level or don't. Don't take it to that level. Squash it, whatever. Like I didn't, I never found it in my nature to really be beefing with dudes that I grew up with. Mm -hmm. But for the purpose of just cleaning up shop to regulate what was what I thought was they, mine. They were from your neighborhood or no? From Edenwall. They were from, from different buildings, you know. Okay. Other side or whatever. whatever. But this is also yeah. too. <clears throat> so this is eighty six, eighty seven. This is this is an incredibly impactful drug. Like yeah. this is you know this is this isn't that's just I knew, that's what made me start hustling. So I understand I what it did I could, to me. I would understand why they be in front of your yeah. like I your feel building. Like I'm a strong character, and I seen what it did to me if I mm -hmm. messed, and it, it almost took full control of me if I didn't, had not bounced out of it. And I tested myself, and I just took a gamble one day, and I said, you know what? In part of my story, I'm gonna get in detail of that that gamble that I took. But that was the decision that I made, either to stay in the game, live, and you know, or die in the game. Either one, I was gonna definitely take it to another level and get serious about my hustle because mm -hmm. I still had no frame of mind about education and getting my life together and doing like more or less what I'm doing nowadays. Like my mentality is not even on no hustle; it's more on you know I'm a personal trainer. And that's mm. what I do for a living. I'm seven certifications, you know, have licenses like crazy for fitness. And that's what I do for a living. Who are some of the people that you trained? Oh, I've trained a few. Um, I saw you training Jim. Yeah, I used to train Jim. I trained Chrissy, Joels, um, Alicia Renee, Julissa Bermudez. I trained a few people in the game. Um... James Cruz. Mm -hmm. so these are some of the people that I've been training since I've been, you know, since I've been home. Because I've been doing it for, like I said, like going on 13 years now. I've been a professional trainer, master level. Have you been home 13 years? How long yeah. have you been home? I remember seeing you, uh, and you know, you, 
I feel like it was a car show. Was the first time I saw you? Oh, let me think. I the feel first like time we saw each other. Yeah, it was the car show. And um, I remember you. Um, I remember seeing you, and I I was surprised by your chipper energy. Mm-hmm. Being home, you know, I've seen yeah. people when they come home, and sometimes they're not in the greatest spirit yeah. when they kind of grab everything as it's going on. But um, you uh, you had a good spirit. I feel like I don't know if it was Jim or Fat Joe. I don't remember what? that I was I, with. That was, yeah, it was Jim. It was, it was Jim. Yeah, I was running, I was running with Jim. We went to the, to your show, and I felt like because I know Jim's younger than me, younger than you. Yeah, I think I said to him, you know, Jim, do you really know? <laughs> <laughs> and Jim you know said, trainer is Jim now. said, yeah. But I was like, I said, well, nah, he, knew, he knew, he knew, he knew like, of you, but he but didn't know how it was going. He didn't start training with me until um, he saw me doing some boxing training with a client, and he was like, yo, I gotta get with that dude. Mm-hmm. You know, he saw me training. He was like, I gotta get with that dude. And then somewhere along the line. Somebody had said my name, my street name, and he heard it, overheard it, and he said, who, who, where? Where, that's, what? Then he was like, oh, and that's how I kind of put it together. And like, that's, and that's who not I was. He was like, my uncle used to talk about you, nah, you, you know, and let's get this training on, and that's what it was all about, like. You know, um, uh, I, I want to explain to everybody properly, you know, at the time, you know, when, and I don't even think I was that young. Well, I was eighty. I was I was twenty. Maybe I was twenty. I was probably in, around the same age. And you know, when people ask for, the, for me to describe, then you know, from afar, the crack just looked like in the very beginning as a fad wave. Like this is the next, you know, weeds boring or whatever's boring. This is the next wave, yeah. and you know. We didn't produce that zombie stealing, sell your TV <laughs> energy. I mean, that's the reason why crack was such a hard it, epidemic in this it, whole country because of the things that it was making people do and the effect psychologically and the and the depression state that you get out of it and all the levels of of energy that you get that are all negative from mm-hmm. from this and you know i'm surprised like people who sniffed coke or whatever did and they it, do those same things like it was a little different so it was a, it was like a you spend the coke i feel like for some people they spend their paycheck going their savings and you feel like when that's done i i'm yeah, i'm right, just yeah yeah because that's a more sophisticated i'll wait till i get some more money high. i'll get back yeah. to that habit the crack wasn't like that crack was like i'm gonna keep smoking until everything disappeared. Yeah, yo, it right. was, and 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 you know, if I I want to say to you too, um, anybody who's watching this, it's a good and a bad thing, you know. I you know, in talking to French and a few other people, you know, at the time this is happening, and you're young, you know, outside looking in. It's kind of unfortunate, and and maybe I'm I'm, I'm saying it wrong, but. People in the street, we didn't have, the rappers weren't our idols yet because rappers and sports, you know, 85, 80, it wasn't really achievable. You couldn't really, that was a hard status to, uh, there was nobody from our neighborhood who made NBA, right? Who, or, 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 or back then, and a superstar status. I mean, not superstar status, but. But those people who got drafted. To the. To the to the NBA, but but it wasn't you know. I'm not mistaken, um, I think it's um, Eric Mobley. Eric okay. Mobley, he was from um from the hood, and he made it to the NBA. But and and you know our Eric music Mobley. stars, our music stars were there, but they weren't they weren't making more money than the sh- people in the street. So you know, the 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 street legends was, you know, was unfortunately I was it was they were our idols because where I stood from it was like how I get it like that, but not just getting it, but the Dapper Dan suit, the jewelry, the chicks. You know, we didn't see the grind, the daily grind in front of the house. Nah. We saw the cars, the jewelry, the Dapper Dan suit. And let me tell you something. That's how at we looked when we got out, when we went out. Yeah, and the Dapper Dan suit, the jewelry, and the cars, I want to keep it so 100, meant 
instant pussy. <laughs> That's what it was back then. And that was the that was the bar, my nigga. Like that was the bar for uh, you know levels. Yeah, the levels and and it took time. Crack had to get like three, four years in. Three because I'm gonna tell you the cycle. A early crackhead would cycle in and cycle out. And then you get a new set of you see a new set of people in the street zombied out and then they go away because they just got too far where they were either dead, homeless, yeah. no money to come around. So you didn't really see the complete devastation in eighty six and eighty seven because it was still so new. It was it I've never seen a drug hit this hard unless you have after. Like I've never seen a drug hit so hard take out so many families take out you know and you know there's people who died from that you're stealing you get robbed you go to jail cops kill you or whatever it might be i mean it was and you started to feel terrified of a person on crack because you know they're gonna rob you and do what they have to do to, to 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 get that but that in 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 that time period now you lighten up the building the money's coming you, it, now, when you when you get this package where you're able to get it on your own and cook up, how does that increase your money now? Like like when you start doing yeah, it, yeah, because you're getting it wholesale instead of buying it retail, you're buying it wholesale. What's the most the height? Your height. We're, we're, we're gonna ask you the number. Is that because I know the because because the I know it. Just that you know, when we read the paper, that the paper that said twenty thousand a day, and, but a day, yeah, That's but a day, said. allegedly twenty thousand. The money in the wall, my nigga, was nuts. You know that was nuts, right? It was like, like, like we were trying to pitch it in the checks. Like it was like that's in the wall. <laughs> Like how is it? Because how they keeping that in the wall? Like how much are they pulling down? Like what was? Were those? I feel the numbers were more. I keep it about, like that. I feel like I feel like that's a big number, but I feel the number was more because I'm not because I feel like if you're doing that, that's not the team. Like that, you have individual team. That you have the, the 41 crews moving. Like, like I won't go into the numbers of what kind of all right money I was making. Uh -huh. But I'm, I I give you an example. And just in the summer of '88, I spent like a million dollars. Just spent in the summertime. <laughs> Yo, he said the summertime. This is yeah, cause what like, else? From like June to the end of the summer, like you right. know what I'm without a summer. yeah, just going places, taking care. You know, you know. If you saw me, you saw my crew, and you could, you know. I meant to tell you, not when everybody. When I got everybody off, looked. When I got off the like phone with money, you, like, yeah. me and you talked. I'm gonna tell you why. The first time I saw you, why I didn't recognize you, because. Back then, you couldn't really tell who which one was Gito because all of y'all had it was big point. chains, uh, cars, and, and, and suits. So if you'd have to really stand there for a I'll while my, and keep looking at me level. like and yeah. see if you saw signs. Whoever got hit like this the most, then you want to look and see is that. Is I'll that let my was? lowest level guy. And you weren't loud. Drive. The flyest car I had, mm -hmm. just so people could say, "Yo, he takes care of his people," and I, that was my thing. My thing is like that. You, if you, if you fuck with me, no matter what I do, most crews didn't it could do be, that. I'm taking care of my my circle, and other dudes from other circles could come at me, and I used to be like, "Yo, you know, I help you get on, as long as you don't step on my toes later." You know what I'm saying? I really didn't care about it, and because you know, I'm a pure hustler, like, and I just feel like. I can still outdo it no matter what. If you try to change the style of how you was getting money and it affected me in any kind of way, I can always reinvent myself again mm -hmm. on another level. A you know? Anywhere, you know, because, and I, and I had asked Kevin this also, um, what's a little rarer for you is you're, you're, in, your, you're in your hood. And you're in with the people that you grew up with, you know, on your team. Mm -hmm. But you're also you're also selling. 
yeah. to people who you knew and grew up with yeah. and see them take a 100 and or 360 degree turn in life. Yeah. Did at any time that concern you? Did any time did it, did it uh, did it affect your your Always. your inner your inside like you know? Always. Every time I seen something happen that was bad or that you know due to the effect of using that drug I will always kind of like blame myself in a certain kind of way like damn like but this is what I was doing to get money this is the only the first talent I learned mm -hmm. like I really you know men have many talents you got to know how to pull it out of them and you put them in certain environments and that's how you would see their talents you know and don't, the first thing I learned was what, what I was exposed to was hustling. Mm -hmm. And then I tried to do that and I was good at it. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, and anything else I tried to do after that, I probably was good at it too. But just that that's the first thing I chose to do. You know, I never really focused on the school because I had no role models that were going to school. Mm -hmm. You understand? Know and I really didn't look at. Was your um, father in your home when you were young? Nah, I grew up, my, my mom's raised me, my pops. Um, lived in the, still in the Tremont area. He worked in West Farms. He had two jobs. My, my father was never like a hustler. He was more, my father was a musician actually that had two jobs. He used to play every instrument. He used to go to like night social clubs up and down Tremont. And he played like, you know, salsa music and all that in the Spanish area. And he knew all how to play all instruments. And he also painted. Mm -hmm. he used to be um he did all those renovated buildings that they was that had burnt down all up and down Tremont area whatever he would get like contracts By to, that cross to, box. Paint, to paint the apartments and then he was also worked for the housing department the you know housing West Farms he, so still, he, he was getting it that, yeah, that's nah, he was, <laughs> you know, my, 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 my father got mad kids I got sisters you know okay. I got like you know you know I considered half sisters and half brothers still all my family you know, mm -hmm. big shout out to the Silvers, big shout out to the Nazarios. That's all my family. You know, um, they all be into handball. Like, I am come from a handball family. Like, mm -hmm. we play a lot of handball and all that. And, you know, he raised everybody. He raised, you know, all my sisters and all my brothers. Mm -hmm. And then I'm. Did you I'm, have a relationship with him when you were young? Did you, did yeah, you well, because my mother used to. As soon as I was old enough. To get on the train by myself, I would shoot down the train and go stay the weekend. Like as soon gotcha. as I got out of school, just to get away from the hood, I would go over there. Mm -hmm. You know, and this was when I was in like junior high school. I was young. I was mad young, way before E V, hustle days, anything like that. I was going back and forth to my pop's crib on the weekends. Did you ever figure out what what later on, yeah, because I came around. I came around flooded with jewels and and he just looked at me, he was like this, he said be careful. Mm. Like he didn't have to ask me what I was doing. It set it all over me, you know? Mm -hmm. And you know how, you know, walking up and down for them in them days well, is like, whoa, shit, look bro. at this dude, this kid, little kid. That was always. Was like the littlest, that was 135 old, not, pounds not, soaking not, wet not that with a chain that heavier up. than me. In the neighborhood, that was always the thing was your age. Yeah. You know, what? Like how young you were. Oh yeah, yeah. At the time, you know, like like you know, everyone else was older. I, when I caught that charge, you know, when I caught that fed case, um, I was twenty one. Mm -hmm. So when you catch this case, right? And I know you said you spent a million dollars that summer. That's not including what your crew spent. How, what what does what does your crew? What, how many members does that get up to roughly? I mean, it went. You know, the numbers of our members fluctuated, but it could be anywhere between thirty and you know. 20, 30 guys, you know, it kept going up. So that that million is just you. That's not nah, well, what's. That's say, not what's. That's not what's. Sir, yeah, look, I, we don't I have to. I don't know how. Yeah, we're not going to count any of those money. But I'm just, I'm painting a picture much, for you. I, I know what I was doing, more or less. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. But I'm just painting a picture that that number was one person. Now we're we're we have a crew of thirty. I'm gonna do the math, bro. If if <laughs> if you if if they doing half what you doing. What's the math on that? That's what's that? Fifteen million? That fifteen? If you do half a thirty, they all bringing in fine. Uh, uh, hey, I'm not blowing anyone up. I, I just uh, that's a lot of bread, bro. That's a lot of like. Um, so like I said, and, and you know, there's no detailed amount. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 
and allegedly it's not like the, it's not no like there's an accountant amount. involved anywhere in exactly. here exactly <laughs> and, and allegedly they if you, we want to talk about public information and what I got what I did time for allegedly they trying they were saying I went through like 150 keys a, a year wow wow according to their math wow. you know Give so or take. we'll keep it like that cuz that's what I that's what I did time for and I I mean I copped out uh -huh. copped out to that to that charge well, I I want I want to take you to something I want to take you to right before I'm going to take you to I'm going to take you to the day of Right, I'm gonna take you the day of. Day of now. We know the numbers you're pulling down. Everything's happening. I'm gonna try to paint the picture. I'm assuming the cars are parked in front, right? I'm, I'm just giving yeah, you a yeah. zoom. Did you have an inkling, a feeling that they was even looking for you, oh, or, or, yeah. or you, you, you knew? Oh, you mean at the, the? You mean the, the point feds. where I, the point where I thought I was going to jail? Well, no. Before you get arrested, there's a time when you hustle that you say. I I know what I'm doing. I could go to jail for this. That's something you accept. Did you from feel day, from, any? From any did you feel the feds in any way before the day they came and got you? Did you? Yeah. You, did you felt they were watching you? Yeah, I saw them. I watched them watch me. Okay, so they so they were <laughs> on the nah, block. I knew they were watching because um, being followed. You know, I was being followed. Like I'll be on the highway doing a buck twenty, uh -huh. past the state troopers, and they don't pull me over. Mm. Cause there was a they light knew. behind in my rear view mirror all the time. Got you. And I would watch. You know, okay, you want to follow me? I'm only going to get some pussy. Like I wasn't really at that point at that time when I was really getting you know a couple of dollars. Um, my day was shop, go holler at a girl, check on you know the circle. Everything good? No beef today? I right, pay. Like that was the same. When you said no beef, I, I want to I want to back up because every day was something going on. I want to back up. I want to back up to the things that that you had <clears throat> mentioned when we talked on the phone, and I heard rumor of it, but you cleared it up for me a little bit. So, um, you had you you had mentioned it that at one time you had gotten kidnapped. This had to be mm -hmm. now. Is this in the eighty seven, eighty six time? Eighty eight. Now, did you know who did it? Um, or you never got to the bottom? We never really knew. Well, it happened. I got kidnapped twice, but um, the first time was like a carjack. Uh huh. And I didn't really know them. And the second time was like my name got mixed up into something that I really didn't do. And honestly, to this day, I could say from my heart that I didn't had nothing to do with. And you know individuals came at me and was like yo you was part of this and they caught me off guard you know where are you at this time you're bronze right, right now nah, right in right in my hood got right you in my hood and um they just caught me off guard in my own hood and you know took me for a ride asked me a lot of questions and i answered them truthfully like yo i had nothing to do with that mm -hmm. and then you know they let me, they just like, yo, go ahead. But you know, when they let me go, I was like, y'all will never get close to me again like that. Mm. You know, that's the the greatest military guy can get touched. Mm. So I can't never say that either, but I just felt that in my heart. Like, you know what, you know how that is. Like, yo, you're gonna keep, everybody's gonna keep a distance from me and I'm gonna keep a distance from everybody. And that, anything that looks negative or alarming or harming mm. to me, I'm gonna stay away from, and that's how I started running for a while. Like, run, I would never stay nowhere more than five or ten minutes. Keep it pushing. Keep it moving. Yeah. So, it, like, I wouldn't. I would go to SNS or rooftop, but I wasn't going in there and staying in there all night. But it but wasn't a. I would SNS, go past. Woo woo do back in the car. SNS down, hey. never felt. Yeah. It. SNS felt. I outside. could get a girl in here tonight, I and I could die in here tonight. Like yeah. you felt I, it, like yeah, you really yeah. felt like that. Like, yeah. and then you'd say, "It's almost like you had to have that instinct." Like, like if it's getting an SNS club, SNS club was an after-hours club where they sold drugs, but they partied as well and played music. And I, I knew DJ yeah, Starchild right from right this over the Willie Burger, right? Right, right, right by Willie Burger, and but you, if if you had a girl with you. You know, you you y'all pass through S and S yeah. for a second. It's setting a tone, a yeah. little more liquor, and we leaving. Or um, you go in and meet a girl. You know, it, it's understood if I'm meeting you at five thirty a.m. in the morning. This is we're going to continue the party elsewhere. 
So you you went in That's there. That's part of the. Yeah, that, that was the ritual. So yeah. you enjoyed going in, and the music on me fly. Star Child wanted to fl- rest in peace. Like pretty routine. Oh, he wanted to fly his niggas on that mic, make you feel like a amazing, like a superstar in there. You feel good. He's putting on the joints, and um, you, you if you somebody he's shouting you. If you nobody, you want to see how he can get to shout you, but. It, it it was definitely a, a moment in time. That's usually after rooftop. Mm-hmm. So, but let me before you go there, and you had asked me that question about like when did I know um, I was being watched or whatever. You know, I like kind of you know you feel you feel a sense of like anxiety or nervousness that something's going on. Like you feel like something's gonna happen. You know, and I I felt that for the first time. Like I went to go buy this car. And I sat in the car, and I said to myself, if I buy this car, I'm definitely going to jail. What car was it? A Ferrari. (laughs) And I wasn't trying to push a Ferrari in the Bronx, and I was willing to do that, but I really thought about it, and that was one time that I didn't just buy out of impulse, like just because I wanted it. I I really thought about it and said, nah, I'm not buying that car. Meanwhile, New York, this is... Very, all of this action's happening a few doors down from the 47th Precinct. I just want to give you the landscape <laughs> of the area so you understand what this is, okay? This is the 47th Precinct's right there, right, like... Yeah, oh, no, I'm sorry. There were two precincts back then. Between both. And there, was, there was the housing that had a precinct in there, I think an underground joint or something, or, yeah. or lower no, level. It, not, it used to be lower, but they... Like two buildings down. That's yeah, it. and then and then two so, away, so and then two buildings. Was it housing way. or transit? It was housing. No, this it's New York City that they um they converted all the tra- um housing police to regular and to regular police. Yeah, they used uh-huh. to have remember they had a blue and orange car. Absolutely. Yeah, so that, no, they, they were that getting was, no respect, yeah, right? It was like security. <laughs> that we cheated. Like Yo, security. remember niggas like class fucking housing. Yeah. Like, like, but they, they, was, they wasn't rescue. They, was they had pistols. Nah, they had real guns and real everything. Yeah, NYC police. So, um, you. Before you, correct me if I'm wrong, in that area was Joe Pratt, correct? Was he like in that, he was in that Eden Wall area? I mean. He's probably the generation before you. Definitely a generation before me. Is he someone that you knew or met at any time? I've heard, no, I've heard of of him before I got in the game. Uh Uh-huh. And um, once I got, you know, once I started getting a little known, I started hearing about him more. Um. No affiliation to him, like individuals used to okay. think, because he's from there, I'm from there, we rang bells, whatever. Um, rumor had got around, like, out my, you know, we were under his wing and this and that, but, you know, like, we had no affiliations, really. I try to keep my distance. Mm-hmm. And I was explaining that to you, the, you know, last time we spoke about if you know another leader and a whole crew of dudes, and you have you you know you 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 have a whole crew of dudes, and you're a leader. You really don't want to mingle with that other guy. You Keep know what I'm moving. saying? Because I don't know if that person is being watched already. Like I could be like feeling like I'm not being watched, but I could be being watched, and then that person could mingle with me, and then they on him. So just for the street code, like we would, I would just stay away from certain dudes that was ringing bells like that too, because. Mm. And and I and and I learned that from somebody else because I had went around a circle of other individuals that was didn't getting money and when they saw me, they was like, "Yo, what's up? What's up, yo?" But we out of here and I was like, "What's up? You on the chip? Nah, yo, you hot." And I was like, back then, you hot means like they watching you, you know. And, mm. and they mean- later on, hot means you telling, you know. So gotcha. like if he hot, it means he could be telling or they could be watching him. So the street slang changed a little bit, but it kind of, you know, means almost the same thing. Gotcha. But one is innocent, the other one is not. Mm-hmm. You understand? Like just being watched is an innocent thing. If you're telling on somebody, then you, it's not innocent. That's you're not doing good. something. You're doing dirt to the next man as you in the same game, you know? And I I don't care. Like I didn't really come in here to talk about like 
snitches, hot and stuff like and all you that. You just saying how how was it yeah, going to feel yeah, that just how, how my code and my policy of what I believed in, what was right as far as being on the street and sticking to the rules of the street. Mm -hmm. So, what, 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 you remember the day you got arrested? The, the, yeah. what, what day was it? April 27, 1989. So, so this happens, you go in, you, you, they already telling you what this is about, right? You, you or you don't know nah, they, the when, when they snatched me, they wasn't talking about nothing. They was just, we, we, we need your body and put you, put me right here and, and like, you're going to see a judge. And, 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 and you th you took you're, me to Manhattan. I'm thinking we're going to Rikers Island or whatever. I'm thinking we're going to Bronx Criminal Court and like, I'm in the van and you know when it, all you, the way to Manhattan. You know when it's feds from the gate. I mean, I heard of the feds. I knew they existed. I knew they could have been watching us or whatever. But the minute they came at me, I seen a different style of police. And I was like, oh, this is, these, are feds, these dudes are feds. And you could see by the way they carried herself or whatever, just the way they did everything. And not only that, they took us to Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Like... So I was thinking, you know how you get arrested, they'll take you to Bronx Criminal Court because you're from the Bronx, you go to your Is that county. your first time ever being arrested? Nah, I'm not first Well, for this, but since you've been, since you was in the street, like like that, heavy. Yeah, of course. That's the first time, this is the first time I ever just you? a case and got convicted. And and just you or who, who else they took that day? Nah, they took my whole crew in one day. They just everybody. found out where everybody was at one time, and they went right at the same time. So they wasn't the even. Time. So they wasn't even all there. At, nah, at, we was all over. You the were place. on the block. You nah. were. Where, you weren't even there. Where, I where, lived in the valley. You lived in the valley. Yeah. When I got knocked at the time, yeah, I lived in the valley. I had a private house in the valley. So, so they get you. They get you, and your whole team yeah, in different locations. Me, they snatched me and two, three guys that were with me. And then there was a few of them playing basketball, a few of them were shopping on for them, a few. But when they ran down, they ran down on everybody at the same time. Mm. So nobody could notify the other person, yo, guess what happened, whatever. You know how that nobody you know, could be simultaneous in order to to sixteen. So now yeah, so this 15. happens, you go in, it's nineteen eighty nine. Like where does it go from here for you, man? Now, when when you when you I guess the next day you hear the charges. Yeah, like, the, um, yeah, well. Were you surprised? Hell no, I wasn't surprised. <laughs> were, you, were you surprised that they <laughs> the saw that much? I was living, I knew that something could happen one day, you know. But yeah. how did they, 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 they got this information from watching you, not from somebody telling them. Yeah. This is watch, they was watching. You, you, keeping it real, like, I can't say I was the smartest hustler. I could say I was one of the dumbest hustlers because of, you know how some dudes be like, yo, damn, somebody telling on me. And he walk away, his name is on the back of his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you telling on yourself by wearing all that shit. I was wearing too much jewelry, too much. I was too young to have all the stuff that I had. So that's telling on yourself right there. Like. Back it then, super back then, it was so was, lit over there, yeah, bro. Not back and then, bright. It was, yeah. it was bright. And you know, not that many people was a successful rapper at that time that you hmm. can blend in. Easily. Nah, it wasn't like there was ten or fifteen. Yeah, you so. know, the closest thing would be somebody like, you know, there was like, you know, there was at the time, you know, you had DST and you had, you know, um, you know, Bambada. You had a you had things from the Bronx that you was generate money, but the flashing wasn't there. You know the cars yeah, and the flash. That's the uptown. Yeah, like it it was. Uptown, it you know, was a little odd. I had like um. I had like a downtown look in the uptown area. Absolutely, which was made me stand out more. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, I'm Spanish, light skin, come from an area mostly. Blacks in our Absolutely. area. You know, we only had a few Spanish families all around, sprinkled around there. You know, at the time, so I easily stood out. Mm -hmm. um, I probably wanted that attention. You know, when you're young like that, you're getting that money, whatever. You want people to look at you, mm -hmm. and you you look for that attention. You know, and that's my whole point. Like speaking today, like you know, I just feel like I need to um, put out a message that. You know, like if anybody was ever affected by me in any kind of way, you know, I 
I just feel like that was a part of my youth, a part of ignorance, something that I didn't know what I was really doing. It's, you know, as far as affecting people. I mean, I knew I was getting money and I knew I was taking chances, mm -hmm. but affecting other people's lives and indirect other parts of their family and other things that they had to go through in result of using the drug that I provided, I didn't force it on nobody because everybody know about the hustle game. If you got it, you want to get high, you know where to get it from. Ain't nobody putting no gun to your head tell you to take to smoke crack. Correct. I it mean, was just a, it was available. And 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 you and you put it in the right words, my brother, just now. You know, in in, in the way you explain it and apologizing, I think yeah, that's, no, that's, I, real, that's I important. No, that's um, I would no way try to glorify what I did. It's mm -hmm. just that I had a name, and um, now because of that, you know, I look people look at me as of some sort of representative from my hood on a positive note because now what I do now. Like, I did my thing, it was part of my youth. I did my time for it, and when I came home, I chose not to live that life. No you more. also didn't cooperate, Definitely you know. Not. You, nobody, you, nobody in my case did. You, you also didn't That's cooperate. The, yep. So all, and all 16 people who, I think Kev's was the same thing, I think. 22. Kev's was 22 yeah. and then it came down to some numbers, but then I think no one cooperated in Kev's case. indictments. Ooh. There was too many of us. Ooh. Chuck. <laughs> oh, Chuck cooperated. You're right. Yeah. Now, you know, there was there could have been so called individuals that had rumor that they might be flipping or whatever this down the third. And really on at the end of the day, my whole crew four one is a bunch of brothers that I grew up with since we were childhood friends and I love all of them at the end of the day, regardless of what. And um I we all copped out, like mm. most of us copped out. Um, most of them, my Cody's, they all copped out first in order for me to get the, you know, my cop out because they was trying to, they were gonna try to force me to trial at one point. Um, but so once, you didn't go to trial? No, I didn't go to trial. I took a cop out, um, but everybody else in my what they call a global cop out. Um, all the um, other co-defendants that are under me on the indictment had to cop out first. And once they copped out, then they would just left me. Were well, you guys so were you can, communicating with <clears> each other? Yeah, you get a, you're allowed to. You're supposed to, um, unless they put you on separation. But we wasn't on separation. Cause the only time they really would put you on separation is if somebody's doing something that's not right, and they're trying to keep you separate from the other, you know, other part of your crew. But nah, these guys, you know. Um, believed in me from Did you come out on bail at anywhere here or he was never nah, bail? They wasn't giving up no bail. Feds don't give up bail like that. Mm -hmm. If you have mad money, you ain't getting out on bail. They don't care who you are. But um, like I said, they all copped out and then they gave me my cop out, which was um supposedly in the beginning 27 to 34 years on the cop out. And I went Meaning, to, meaning you're eligible <coughs> for parole after 34 years? Or yeah. you got to put that time in, like, what does that mean? Like when No, you got to put that, um, it's, they, when it comes to the feds, they give you whatever number you get, you do like 87.1% of that number that they give you. Mm -hmm. And if you get good time, well, that's part of the good time. And then, um, I don't know how the laws, there hasn't been any laws being changed within the last few years. I know um, a lot of guys were released on a pardon recently after Obama left office. Okay. But um, the law have really hasn't changed that much since then. Um, I was sentenced under the 1987 guidelines, mm -hmm. but then they had the 1994 Crime Act that came out after that. And I was, um, I didn't, it, didn't, it had nothing to do with me and it doesn't apply to my case or nothing like that. Was that an increase or a decrease in years? Um, increase in like the way they did the parole system. And the reason why I was saying that is because if you do the 87% um, percent of the number, which is like, let's say they gave me 25. Let me back up a little bit, because um, I didn't get to tell you. So I went to the courtroom and, um, thinking that I was gonna get anywhere between 27 and 34 years. <laughs> but the judge said um, two points off of accepting responsibility, meaning, yes, 
I was doing what I was doing. I'm not telling on nobody. I'm just admitting to my crime so I can get this cop out. You know what I'm saying? So um, he was like, you accept responsibility, so I drops you down two points, whatever. And so I'm giving you 300 months. So I, at the time, you know, I didn't know what, 300 months, I'm thinking years, you're expecting they, they're going to say years to you. And then he comes out with 300 months. So I was like, right away, told my lawyer, you know, Let's do this how, many, how many years is that? He was like 25, like he already knew the map. So he's at 25 years, so that was my sentence. Were you surprised? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't surprised because I, by the time I, I got that sentence, I was already locked up for a year. And I was already accepting the fact, yo, I was looking at these dudes get hit in the head. They were going to court. They were, they got Your team or just other, other teams? teams. And they were coming through, you know, getting hit in the head with, with heavy numbers, you know, and they football. Was, yeah, <laughs> that's you what know, they, that's everybody was just getting right. Those football know, numbers. You know, y'all talking about boy George earlier. Yeah, he was one that was like, yo, you know, he knew he wasn't gonna get a cop out because he's forced to try or whatever. But um, he was one of the ones like, yo, cop out, man, get that number if they could give it to you. And a couple of other OGs that was before my time, legendary from other areas, was telling me too. Mm-hmm. Yo, if they give you a cop out, take it. And I was like, all right. So they don't offer that to everyone? Nah. Not when you go to trial. They trying to, in a way, try to save money by not, you, if you don't go to trial and you cop out, you save them money. The court fees, lawyers going back and forth. You eliminate the process. Here, let's run him into the system. His point system means he gets this amount of years, put it in, you know, they log it in and you... Start doing your time. See you later. And so um, that's basically what happened. They gave me the 25, and then I was in for 10 years, and I fought this gun case I had, and I beat it. When you say gun case? Um, 924C. Well, the, the, well, wait, wait. No, but was the gun case <laughs> from before you went in or while you went in? It was part of the case. They gave me, a, they gave me 20 years for 848 and five years consecutive on top of that 20 for 924C, use of a, a firearm in the connection of a drug trafficking crime. Okay. So the wording was wrong, use, because they never really said I used anything. They never had proof of me using every, any, any gun. So it was like, and a lot of people had fought that case, United States versus Bailey, have fought that case, and they, they, they gave time back under that. So somebody asked me, yo, you got a 924C? And I was like, yeah, oh, shit. And they helped me do my paperwork. And you know, six months later, they knocked off. Um, five? They knocked off, they, was, they knocked off five years. But I was under the impression that they were going to take, um, they were going to knock off five years and enhance me two points back and give me 36 months back out of the 60, which is, you know, but um, I believed it, and I just didn't know about the, the the law had changed somewhere in between when the prosecutor sent me a letter saying, "Yeah, we're going to enhance you these two these points, and you're going to get another thirty six months on top, and we're going to take the sixty back, but put thirty six back, so you're really only getting like two years knocked off, two three years knocked off instead of the whole five. So um, nah, but the judge wrote a letter saying, "Nah, this." He was sentenced under the 1987 guidelines where the law to enhance a person and for you know and give them the point system it didn't even apply at the time when he got arrested so it doesn't apply to him so I hereby vacate the whole 60 months so he vacated five years off my sentence so out of the 25 what year did that happen after you were in 10 it happened in 97 and then so when I was then 10 I was almost so, 10 so you thought you had 15 left I had 13 left? yeah I had 13 left they took not uh, they took 5 off and left me with 8 you aesthetic. and I was like oh I'm under 10 that's all I cared about like when you're doing numbers like that you just count them by 5s and 10s like you don't really count a year one year at a time oh like, you're under you're I under had 10 a workout to get out. routine to last me 2 3 years you know what I'm saying like Two, three like years. Like I'm under nothing. 10 to like get out. The, yeah. Ten, first, you know, you start with 20. You're like, I got to get to the halfway mark. And then that 10 is like, I got to get to the halfway mark again. Like you always try to break it in half, half, half. You know, however you got to break up your bed. But the best, you know, the whole thing is to stay busy, 
focus and try to keep your mind right so you can come home sane, man. Because a lot of dudes, like, you know, I heard you say it before, like, dudes come home, they, they lost it. Like, their mind ain't where it's at, supposed to be. And, it's different. And I'm it's not even going to say I didn't lose a couple marbles myself, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not going to... Stand in front of you and be like, yo, I'm completely sane because I had to go through something. Like, psychologically, the Fed system is all about that. That's what they do. They they work on your cycle, mm-hmm. on your psycho, you know, on the psychological level. They work on you. They don't, it's not like the state. State's like f- a lot of physical stuff going on and mental, but the Fed's is more mental. Mm-hmm. They play a lot of head games. That's just their thing. Um, that's, uh, Did you ever won- worry about dying in there? Yeah, yeah. Is that a daily thought? That's a daily thought. I think for anybody that be locked up, you know, you don't you don't want to die in prison, and you know, you don't get to come home to see your parents, your moms, or p- other family and kids that you that's been waiting for you. Mm-hmm. You know, my son, my son grew up without me. You know, and thank God he he's successful. Like he was able to focus and go to school, and he's like me to the third power, and when all educated, like you know, my son's a chemical engineer. You know? Yeah, yeah, he's he's actually doing great. You know, I'm very proud of him. And I have another son that's three. You know, I got a three year old, very smart kid. You know, I'm proud of what I did since I've been home. Well, it, it, you you immediately got into. Um, personal trainer and yeah and you I were studied that before get, I came home you, yeah you were blessed to get get a couple of celebrities under your belt and you know I know you talked to me about you you love to speak to the kids and you love to share your story mm-hmm. you know and not to glorify it but to show people how Especially to do differently to yeah I, I just want to make sure that um that young guys could and girls whatever could give themselves better options in life. You know, like, look for, s- don't go, f- don't go and do the first thing you see that everybody else is doing and decide that's gonna be your thing. Mm-hmm. Cause that was my mistake. That was really where I made a wrong choice in life. I saw hustling, first thing I was exposed to and the first thing I tried to do and then I, because I was having so much fun with it, I thought that was just me, like, you know? And I'm just, I feel like I'm more broader than that. My spectrum is way broader than that. And, I'm, you know, I, I plan on doing much more positive things. And I think that, you know, this, my story can, can open up other doors for other people and, you know, give somebody something to look at so they can measure it with without having to go through it themselves. Mm-hmm. Which is great words, and I appreciate you. You know, I, I you know, I've s- seen you several times. I mean, when you say yeah, t- we bump into years, each other. Everywhere. I didn't even um, thirteen years. I didn't even know you were home <clears> that long. Yeah, but um, you know, I your thing was in oh six oh eight. I think it was. But well, we saw each well, other. This correct. Edison. So it was like almost ten joints. Oh eight, and um, so I was home oh six. I came home oh six and the oh five going on oh six. Um when you when you walked out, when you came out, where, where were you where'd you do most where'd you do your time when you walked out? Like what where I, were I you? I went home from Fort Dix, in Jersey. This what, this Jersey. New Jersey, Fort Dix, yeah. So I I didn't believe I was honestly, I just never really believed I was gonna be out until the, I actually was out. Even on the last day so when you, I come, was thinking while I was putting my clothes on, somebody like, they're gonna come and be like, "No, nope, you ain't going nowhere." This and that, and that you know, like except man, it's just so you said bullshit yeah, because you become like that because they sell so many dreams to you, and your mind starts thinking. You ever try to ask somebody, "You gonna do me that favor?" <laughs> and they go, "I'm gonna do it," and then you go, "You gonna do me that favor?" <laughs> and I ask the same question again because you need to be verify. You need to be sure all the time. You walk That's out. That's what that does. To you. you walk out of Fort Dix. What's the year now? Oh, se- oh six. Yeah, I was picked up. Um, I had, you know, I, I got married in there. Okay. I got married. This was this was a childhood. You was a sweetheart. Yeah, from my hood and from, from when you was locked up. When you got locked up, she was your girlfriend. Um no. Okay. 
she started coming to see me and writing me letters and all that while I was locked up. Mm -hmm. And we ended up getting close and we ended up getting married. And she came and married me right up in there, you know? I'm curious, did she know your ex? <laughs> did yeah. She, they, well? She doing well? Yeah, okay, I mean, okay. You don't know the names they have for each other. Okay. <laughs> 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 wow. Yeah, wow. now nah, big shout out to Michelle, big shout out to Sharice, those are my, you know, um, exes. And, but, uh, and past friends and future friends. How about yeah, that? Nah, you know. Everything's love. Mad love, mad love to all the people I ever touched base with, man, for real. Like, I never really wanted to have a negative impact on anybody, but I definitely want to know, let everybody know that, I, that I've been around, that Man, I got nothing but love for, for everybody, man. Like, I just want to live good, be happy. I got that energy for you, bro. Because, you know, yeah. look, for me being the first time, I'm, you know, I'm wondering which Kito are you? You know, yeah, I'm wondering, yeah. you know, I'm like, yeah. well, I ain't going to lie to you. Listen, you, know, I, you know, there's a portion I thought the exercise shit was the front. Yeah. I, was, I was like, this dude he, can't he, be he a back trainer. In the game. <laughs> like, nah, I'm because, I, no, yeah. look, if it wasn't, it was a great plan because I was like, <laughs> he's mixed up in all his music business. He's he's running with, he's running with the celebrity. So I'm I'm like, well, how does this happen so fast? And they can't know what this guy did at one point, like how he controlled a portion of the Bronx. They can't. <laughs> and uh, they was young. I was like, you know, I, but then you you your energy, I could tell, man, you were. That you wanted to, build, I get that you was building your business. You, were, I went to your Instagram. You know, I think we stopped following each other. And you were, you know, you heavily on the exercise game and and positive. I can tell you, I can tell you know you you you're in that um, space. Mm -hmm. Back to that day, you come out. I know, I don't know, but I want to know from you. You have to have these images of what you think it's like. Oh, what was to be my, out, right? What was, you, what was alarming to me? When yeah, when you when you fucking when you like, bam, what this? I'm in oh, Jersey. Yeah, like, man. what? What was that? Like, yeah, what was the that? The day when I came home, man. Like, we was racing on. You know, she picked me up, so we racing on the highway. You know, you driving? There. No, she's driving. I wasn't driving. Uh, I wasn't ready to jump behind no wheel yet. I was too nervous for just being out there. Like, you know. um, it was crazy, like once I came to like the neighborhood and started- That was seeing, your first stop? You know what the, nah, I didn't come, no, I went straight to the halfway house. I had to go to report to a halfway house for six months. Okay. And then I did five years supervised release after that. So I was <sighs> on parole for five more years after I've been. So technically 2010, I'm- Off oh, everything. Yeah. But um, I really found it weird that the whole world had a cell phone. <laughs> Everybody. All I saw was people going around. <laughs> oh, yeah. Driving me nuts. I was like, I used to, I'm telling you, I used to like, man, everybody got, like, I started. Well, cause that's a, not there. Yeah, we, There's no phones there. Well, you were. Oh, when I went away, there was no cell phone. When we had was those motor rollers, like Big that's shit. the only thing we was we was rocking. And then when I came home, like everybody had a cell phone. I really even seen like little kid walking down the street, and he's like, and you know, I'm like damn, like, everybody has a cell phone. So that was one of the things that, um, the strangest, just kind of made me. Edgy. What about when you saw the cars? Huh? When you saw all the cars, when you like, you know, like, yeah, I was car man. So how did that? Yeah, oh, I, I'm always on the car. Even when I was inside, I used to get all the car books, mm -hmm. and I used to look at every magazine that had all the nice cars. I'm up on cars. Like mm -hmm. I came home, up on cars and computer literate. Okay. You know, those are the two things I focused on. Um, when it comes to like, just being educated with, like knew about cars, knew about every kind of car that was out and what they had changed about them throughout the years mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And then as far as, um, I just took all the classes I could when I was in there. You know, I, I got like 23 different certs of VT courses that I took mm -hmm. when I was in there. Anything, um, you know, things from computers to parenting to drug counseling and all that electronic certification. I came home with two fitness licenses and a, mm. an associate's degree in business management. 
So I was like, you were preparing to get back into oh definitely civilization to get back into the world. Even the last three years before I came home, I started really narrowing down. Okay, now you got the education. Now, now what is are you really going to do? Like, what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. What job you going to pursue? What you, what you really going to go do? And then so you know they were offering certification um, courses mm-hmm. for personal training, and I took it. I took the I passed one when I was in uh, Raybrook. Mm-hmm. I did the majority of my time in Raybrook. Uh, I did ten years straight there. Mm-hmm. And where's this? Seven New York upstate, like near the Adirondacks. They always say that they move you closer to home when you're getting ready to get released. Yeah, That's it's true. called near release program. It's called mm-hmm. near release. So um, they they put me on that. They didn't have that when I started my bid. Mm-hmm. They had the opposite actually. It was like they sent me straight to California. Mm. When I got sentenced in the beginning. What's the purpose of that? To the opposite. Break. break up everything? Break you away from your family. Okay. Break you away psychologically too. Like So that's, that was their thing. How and long did you stay in the West Coast? Three years. The first three years. That's why I told oh, you, you I met Matulu. Okay. I did time. I did time now this him. was um, Tupac's stepfather, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I met him, um, I just happened to be in the same unit. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, uh, they put me in the maximum security unit mm-hmm. in, that, in the jail. So, like, dudes that were in the unit was like, why are you in this unit? Because you're, like, from from, is, you're so like, far away. Because you're so far away? They're or? like, no, no, the unit uh, of the jail was the maximum unit of the prison. Like, gotcha. so they put me in the highest security unit. And then but he you was weren't in for nothing violent, though. No, that, but that's usually for it. It was just because right? of because of the case or whatever. Because I don't know. I mean, could have been space or whatever. I don't know what the reason was, but I ended up in this. That unit. money in the wall, though, bro, was a lot happening. <laughs> There's a lot happening. Allegedly. <laughs> hey, yo. So, yeah. There was a lot now, happening. But um, I got to meet him, you know, and mm-hmm. he taught me a lot of, you know. He told me a lot of things about bidding, how to do time, and keep your head right. And he was a very sharp individual, and I and I've learned it was a brother like that everywhere I went. Mm-hmm. You know, and that always scooped me and pulled me to the side and said, "Yo, you got potential for greatness, and you need to um, channel that shit into something more positive." And you know, I know you're here, but guess what? Now you can focus on your return. Like, and then that's that's how I spent my years. Like. Mm. I, I was up on the latest videos, BET, MTV, but I didn't sit there all day. Mm-hmm. You understand? And be watching the same video over and over. It's a difference. And I used to go to you know school when I had to, go work out, and they had a job. I, I started routining myself with waking up in the morning and going to a job consistently. You know, and some things that the federal system does can benefit you. like. They, you know, they have these IDs, which, you know, that they, you know, every every inmate got to have an ID, and they taught me how to budget my money electronically. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. everything is electronic. Pretty for minutes, world, too. Yeah, and believe it or not, that trains you. That trains you to learn how to budget your money, bank accounts. Or, Get out into the world. Yeah, so when you come home, it's the same thing. You got a debit card, you know how to use it, keep track of your money, and it's kind of like training for the streets, which is, you know... I took it, I tried to take everything that they were doing mm-hmm. and turn a positive note into it. Like, you know what, y'all gonna get me like this, but this is how I'm gonna benefit off it. You know, like, that was my thing. You know, um, I commend you for being here this amount of years later and uh, not just finding positivity, but being positive and looking to help your community because a lot of people usually don't choose to do that. <clears throat> and... um. I appreciate you coming and sharing your story because I know I, I called you off guard. I, I called, and then uh, you did say that if I had called you maybe a little prior to that, it may not have been something you'd have been into. Yeah. And but I uh, uh, appreciate you sharing it and saying what's right from wrong, and also admitting to your mistakes, and also rectifying your mistakes, serving your time and wanting to help your community i think is very positive and it and it's a great thing you know let's let's turn it into something anyway i can help you do that my brother i'm here for you 
Definitely, man. I appreciate uh, it. I'm, sure. I'm here for you, and I appreciate your time and you sharing your life with us. Definitely. You know what it is. One more thing. Yes, sir. You know, I play handball. Big shout out to Gunther Park, all my people. Oh, he said Gunther. That's my thing. That's oh. right. That's what we call it Gunther Park. Wait, you know what I'm saying? But, that um, park is up. You don't want to have, <laughs> right? And you make the, is it nope. the, no, not the, not nope. the right, it's not that school? Where's Gunther Park? By Chuck E. Cheese. Ah, oh, got it, yeah, got Michael it. Michelangelo. I'm thinking Gunther Ave. MS-144 is the back of that. Okay. Um, park. It has um handball course. I be playing, like, my sister's a top player, and my family come from, you know, we do a lot of that. You know that's some super northeast Bronx shit though, like that. That well, the, 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 the super that's, Spanish too. That, that's super northeast, <laughs> that's like. Nah, we are. Cause they yeah, had, they, that's way not. I can't like, get no do they still have the handball that, court, court on the highway. Do they still have the handball court in Eden Ward? Uh, not Eden Ward. Um, Eighty seven. There used to be a handball court in there. Of course, it's yeah. still there. Eighty seven Park. Yeah. It's still yeah, there. Yeah. All right. Seventy eight Park had one. Um, uh, 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 sixty eight Park. You mean sixty eight? Wait. Yeah, see no. See sixty eight is by you. Where's 78 at? Hold up. Let me tell you what 78 is. 78 is off Boston Road. Over there? Yeah. Uh, Eastchester? Uh, Hicks Avenue. Um, uh, uh, Hicks. Oh. It, it, yeah, it, I know what you're talking it's about. It's right there. At the bottom. At the bottom. Correct. 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 You see us. You know what I mean? One.